It's time for Morning Today with Jonathan Mark on AM 1480 WLEA. Yes, it is time for Mornings at 8. It is 8.05 on a Tuesday morning, and here we are. And as I've said in the past, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The best that could be said for Tuesday is, at least, is not Monday all over again. So the beginning of the week is done. That's it. Now we are in the middle of the work week. You know, you miss a day, you miss a lot. Man, there was so much going on. Uh, I mean, where, where, do, you, where do you start? Um, let me see... In the first place, coming up Mount Ashbaugh this morning, there was a little fawn all by itself. No doe, no nothing, just this little fawn all by itself right smack in the middle of the road. And normally you see a fawn and there's going to be a doe somewhere. So I'm driving up Ashbaugh Hill very, very slowly because I don't want to hit this this, this little fawn. I don't want to hit Bambi, but that's that's got to be bad luck. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and there was no other deer. So finally, this little fawn just walks off all by itself, and the, and there's there's no there's no nobody else, only this little fawn. Who knows? Okay, uh, Saturday. That's right. My wife and I are outside, and I look. We're working in the garden, or my wife's working. I'm kind of supervising, and three leaves fell off one of our maple trees. Three leaves. Make a note of that. That was August uh, 10th. So three leaves, the first three leaves of fall. It was a sad moment. It really was, but I guess like summer's gone. But on the other hand, uh, or it will be soon, you know, every season has its its time, right? So that's the end of, you know, summer's kind of winding down. And uh, there you go. So I guess on the other hand, or by the same token, I guess, we have nice cool nights which are very nice for sleeping, way better than it was a couple of weeks ago, way better. So that's okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, man, there's a lot going on. Wow. The Steuben County Fair opens this morning, the 200th Steuben County Fair. It began in uh, 1819. So it starts this morning and runs through, it runs through Saturday, Sunday. It runs through Sunday. So the 200th Steuben County Fair and uh, actually, the uh, the Spectator had a very nice insert in Sunday's paper about the Stumai County Fair. And they have a whole schedule of events that going on all week. I mean, every single day. It's always a big, big event. Big hit. Uh, let me see. This is $2, what, this $2 admission day. That's nice. And they're going to have harness racing, of course. That's always fun if you like harness racing. Uh, a demolition derby and a whole bunch going on. And, what, you know, I was looking ahead of the schedule here. Wednesday... As part of the fair, the Steuben County 4-H is going to have from 2... This is so cute. Uh, let me see. Wednesday, from 2 until 4, they're going to have the Steuben County 4-H, a rabbit hopping competition. Rabbit hopping competition. That should be incredibly exciting. And I can't wait for the rabbit hopping competition on Wednesday from 2 until 4. So you see these little rabbits hopping all over the place in the youth building there. Okay, what else here? Of course, this weekend we have the Irish Festival here in Hornell. I've got to call somebody and find out a little more about the Irish Festival. It should be very, very big. So that'll be a lot of fun. And that'll be in downtown Hornell. And also, I think the Balloon Rally in Wellsville, is that this weekend? Uh I should have made a note of that. Uh, I believe it's this weekend. I'm not sure. I really ought to check on that. So let me see what's going on. Well, I wasn't going to do this until just a little while ago, and I I found it. But on Drudge, there is a, the Drudge Report, there is a story. Now, Chris Cuomo is a reporter for CNN. Now, I'm not crazy about Chris Cuomo, nor am I crazy about CNN. But some things go a little too far. But Chris Cuomo is at a bar somewhere, uh, let me see, toward the Hamptons on Long Island, on Shelter Island, I think. And he was at a bar. And some schmo goes up to him and refers to him as Fredo, the character from The Godfather, the weak brother. So this drunk, I guess, doesn't know Chris Cuomo. He doesn't know him from a hole in the wall. And he refers to him as Fredo. Now, maybe you like Chris Cuomo, and maybe you don't, but you don't do that. Because it is a disparaging term. Now, 
Rush Limbaugh, Lord love him, uh, refers to Chris Cuomo as Fredo. And that's, that's Rush, okay? But I, Chris Cuomo goes ballistic. I mean, he just goes totally over the edge. And they come within a half a whisker of a fist fight. And if, if you do happen to go to Drudge, and the story is right smack at the top, be sure there are no children around. And I, I really not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding about this. Be sure that there are no children around. Because it's worth a listen if you're an adult. But Chris, it's, it's Chris Cuomo. It's a reporter as you've never heard him. Any reporter. But he just goes off on this guy. And rightfully, you know, really, rightfully, I think he should have. Because you don't do that. It's a disparaging term, and it is. And old Chris stands up for himself, I mean, majorly. And uh, you don't go, you know, we toss these words around, and we call people names and words and this and that, and eventually somebody's going to turn around and deck you one, and that's all there is to it. Now, Chris Cuomo seems to be in pretty good shape. So if this if this drunk referred to him as Fredo, uh, he's, he's lucky that it wasn't a fist fight. You know, but you, you just you just don't you don't go doing that. OK, Sean Rush Limbaugh. Hannity, the latest on this, Jonathan, yeah. is that uh, Sean Hannity is sticking up for Chris Cuomo. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He well, says, he yeah, says Cuomo a was out with his family and young, right. young kids and it was obnoxious right. to do it at Chris Cuomo. True. But see, there's a lot of obnoxiousity out there because how many people have been harassed in restaurants because they support Trump? You know? So it kind of works both ways, and, and both of them are wrong. You don't harass people in a restaurant if they like Trump, and you don't go calling Chris Cuomo Fredo when he's out there with his family, you know, enjoying himself. You just you just don't do that. That's what's happened to our culture. People, I, I don't know, man, it just, it's it's a jungle out there. It is, you know, it's, it's, it's terrible. But if you want to hear this thing, as I said, a CNN reporter, as you've never heard him, uh, huh. We can't. We we cannot even play you two consecutive the seconds of that clip, and it's a long. I don't know who who took it on video, but we cannot play you two consecutive seconds. And I'm really not kidding. If you listen to it, you'll see why. Okay, that's going on there, and that's about enough of <laughs> what our culture has become. There we go. Let me see. Oh, yesterday during this time slot, uh, Brian interviewed Hornell Mayor John Buckley. And I was thinking about that. I was off doing something. I had appointments. Uh, but Mayor Buckley was talking about the infrastructure in Hornell. And, you know, as he's going over this list of projects that they're doing and plan on doing, I'm thinking, you know, think of the infrastructure of your house. And you have to maintain your house. Imagine maintaining a city. That's a lot of work. You have streets. And you have sidewalks, and you have bridges, and you have water, and you have sewage, and you have all this stuff. And I thought, in the years I did live in Hornell, now we live in greater metropolitan Almond, uh, that bustling hub of industry and commerce. Uh, but when I did live in Hornell, I always admired the job that the DPW did. They have always done, I thought, in my opinion, a very, very, very good job. Considering the weather here, and the weather just eats the bejeebers out of everything, Streets, roads, you know, sidewalks and bridges and all that stuff. And they got to keep up with it and keep ahead of it or try to. So just, I just thought, I, you know, I just thought I mentioned the DPW does an absolutely excellent job. And they always have. Plus, there are three bridges, if I recall. Mm -hmm. There are three bridges on the schedule for next year in 2020. So it's an ambitious uh, plan, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that the city of Hornell can do it. I'm sure. Okay, what else? We would mention that. Went to that, the balloon there, the balloon. Ah, yes. Okay. Moving on. We have a Long Island politician uh, has unveiled legislation that would require all New York State school children, public and private, to be educated in the meaning of swastikas and nooses as symbols of hatred and intolerance. I guess the theme this morning is people who are just kind of intolerant, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, uh, as symbols of hatred and intolerance. The bill is sponsored by State Senator Todd Kaminsky, a Democrat from Nassau, that's downside, <clears throat> uh, would mandate 
that 6th through 12th grade students in both private and public schools learned about the meaning of the swastika as the emblem of Nazi Germany as well as the noose as a symbol of intimidation, racial intimidation. The Board of Regents, of course, has to approve it, of course, I guess, and it has to be approved by the legislature in Albany. Uh, the bill will be taken up in Albany in January. So I think that, I think that is a very, very good idea because our knowledge of history is it's not... <clears throat> yeah, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a good idea. A lot of people don't learn about World War II or what it really was, and they don't really learn about what happened uh, primarily, I uh, don't like saying it, but primarily in the South uh, for a long time. So I think that's a very, very good idea. Okay, and speaking, as I said, speaking about uh, things that are going on, Hispanics in El Paso, now this is from, uh, where is this? This is from Reuters. Hispanics in El Paso, Texas, flock to firearms classes. Apparently, these uh, firearms classes are totally jammed in the last week or week and a half or so. So all these people are taking training in firearms. And uh, there is a law. Let me see. Hmm. One little part of it says, uh, what's her name? 35-year-old Guadalupe Segovia was at one of the classes with her two children. She said her military husband had long been pushing for her to get a concealed carry license, which you can in, in Texas, which allows the holder to wear a gun hidden under their clothes or carried in a purse when they are in public. And, you know, yeah, it's unfortunate, but I think it's probably a good idea. You don't want everybody running around with guns because you, you just don't, but I, I could certainly, certainly see their point. Yeah. What else? What else is going on? Oh, Jeffrey Epstein. Where I made some notes about that. This Jeffrey Epstein thing is just terrible. It's just terrible. Uh, you knew that there were going to be conspiracy theories all over the place. You ju you just knew it. You knew it. And the conspiracy theories are all over the place. Um, he was in his. Well, y you've heard it time and time again. But I just. Thought I'd mention that you know that is so totally despicable. What he allegedly did, and his cohorts. And now. Now that uh, Jeffrey Epstein has hung himself or hanged himself, I guess would be the word. Um, Attorney General William Barr says it's still going to be prosecuted. They're, they're still going to be investigating. So he had ties allegedly to a lot of people in a lot of places, really high places, very powerful people. And the whole thing is just sleazy. I mean, the whole thing is sleazy. These girls that he and who knows who, you know, had uh, er, uh, contact, yeah, contact with, uh, they, were, they were girls. They were young teenage girls. How despicable is that? These were grown men. These were adult males. And the girls, what, 14, 15 years old? Now, I don't have any kids, but I do have a granddaughter. Actually, technically, it's my wife's granddaughter, but she is my granddaughter, too. And she's 17 years old. And when I think of these sleazes doing what they allegedly did, and then I think 17-year-old grand... Really? Well, that kind of seals it right there. That seals it right there. I hope that William Barr really goes after all these people and keeps digging and digging and digging and finds somebody, somewhere, all these people do something. You know what I mean? You just, you, you just can't, you just can't do that. That is so, so very wrong. I mean, really, really wrong. And I read, there was uh, old Mr. Epstein there in an interview just a little while ago, or a couple, of, I think a couple of years ago, said that, well, it's perfectly okay because the laws preventing an adult male from having mm, contact with a teenage girl is a cultural aberration. That's what he called it. It's a cultural, that's a cultural aberration? Are you kidding me? These were little girls. They're 14, 15 years old. And this guy was in his, what, 40s or something or whatever? What? As I said, I hope that William Barr 
really goes at it and keeps at it and keeps at it and keeps at it. And if anybody's involved and if anybody was doing the same thing, they should be prosecuted too. I just thought, just thought I'd, uh, just thought I'd throw that in. Okay, let me see. What other sleaze are we dealing with here this morning? Uh, this is from The Hollywood Reporter. You've heard about, of course, that uh, film called The Hunt, in which what are called elite liberals go hunting for MAGA types, Make America, uh, Make America Great Again types, Trump supporters. They go hunting for them for sport. <laughs> they refer to them as the deplorables. Remember that? Well... Uh, universe, uh, let me see here. Is they, they, they've put the entire thing on hold. They're not going to, to, to release it. Uh, let me see. While you, this is a statement from the, the studio. While Universal Pictures had already paused the marketing campaign for The Hunt, after thoughtful consideration, the studio has decided to cancel our plans to release the film. We stand by our filmmakers and will continue to distribute films in partnership with bold and visionary creators like those associated with this, this satirical social thriller, but we understand that now is not the right time to release this film. And I can only ask, when the heck would be the right time? People don't go hunting people. You, you, don't, you don't do that, especially because of their politics. That was totally disgusting. Well, never mind that. I know. I, I, sometimes I do get pretty heated. And anyway, I missed a day, and so I got to, like, like pen up here. Insurance, insurance, insurance. Everybody needs insurance. Well... Here's a question. Can you do better than the Ryan Agency? The answer is no. You cannot do any better than the Ryan Agency. They have offices in Hornell and Jasper and Wellsville. They are insurance experts. They live right here. They know you. They know the area. And they will find out your insurance needs and find the best insurance rates for you. And it can get very, very complicated, but they have the answers. If you want to contact them here in Hornell, it's 324 7500 the Ryan Agencies. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, here's Eddie Garcia. In Major League Baseball games of note, the Indians beat the Red Sox 65 thanks to a Carlos Santana walk-off solo homer in the ninth. Cleveland is now a half game up on Minnesota for first place in the AL Central. Rays down the Padres 10-4. Tampa Bay now with a two-game lead on Oakland for the number two wildcard spot in the American League. Nationals get by the Reds 7-6. Washington has a one-game lead now on Milwaukee for the top wildcard spot in the National League. Domabacks over the Rockies 8-6. Arizona is two and a half games out of a wildcard spot in the National League. Yankees sweep a doubleheader from the Orioles. They win game one, eight to five. Take the second game, eleven to eight. Glaber Torres for New York hit three home runs in the day. He now has twenty six homers in the season. Thirteen have come against Baltimore. College basketball: the NCAA has amended its certification process for agents, what some have called the Rich Paul rule. With those looking to represent basketball players who are deciding whether to stay in school or explore the NBA draft, no longer being required to have to have a bachelor's degree. From the Fox Business Network, futures are pointing to a lower open on Wall Street. All three stock averages closed sharply lower yesterday with continued concerns about the impact of the trade dispute and the fallout of the protests in Hong Kong. Uber's stock closed sharply lower, under $39 a share for only the second time since going public. The slip follows reports that Uber's engineering department has imposed a hiring freeze. Blogging website Tumblr has been sold. Online publishing company WordPress purchased Tumblr from Verizon for an undisclosed amount. WordPress's parent company Automatic will take on 200 Tumblr staffers. The Dow Jones Industrials dropped 389 yesterday. The Nasdaq was down 95. The S&P lost 35. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Ginny Cosola. Mike Kappel here, serial entrepreneur with words from another happy payroll customer. I've used it for a year now, and I've worried zero time. I just enter in the time, it's calculated, and it's taken out of bank account, and it's just done. I love it. Visit us at PatriotSoftware.com. Use promo code RADIO and get two months of payroll free. With That's PatriotSoftware.com. Patriot accounting and payroll, keep your time and money. Today at Simmons Rockwell Ford in Hornell, Bath, or Halstead, drive a new 2019 Ford Escape SE 4x4 equipped with heated power seat, 
8-inch touchscreen media and alloy wheels now buy for only $21,099. Shop the Simmons Rockwell Ford dealerships in Hornell, Bath, or Halstead. Simmons-Rockwell.com. Okay, social security scams. Now, I mentioned in the past that uh, my wife and I have received a couple of phone calls from people purporting to be from Social Security saying that something has gone wrong with your account and you have to do this, that, and the other thing. And, of course, it's a scam. It is a scam. They will not call you on the phone. Uh, there was a story in, uh, where did I, you know, I don't remember where I found it, the Washington Post. And it's a lady uh, writing about uh, personal experiences her grandmother had with scams. And the thing goes, uh, your telephone rings and an automated message says your social security number has been suspended because of some suspicious activity. Uh, You may even be threatened with arrest if you don't call the telephone number provided in the automated message. If someone calls saying that your social security number and the benefits connected with it may be in jeopardy, it's understandable that you might panic. You're told to reactivate your social security number and you might have to pay a fee or buy gift cards. That's kind of weird or something like that. Uh, but you, you, you're also afraid of being cut off from the money you so desperately need, and it overtakes any reservations you may have. But you have to be very, very careful. These scammers are all over the place. There are sharks all over. So here are a couple of tips. Don't answer calls from numbers you don't recognize. We never do. If I don't recognize the number, I don't answer it, and that's all there is to it. Now, never give out personal information such as your account numbers. You should know this, but who knows? Such as your account numbers, passwords, social security number, mother's maiden name, or other identifying information if a call seems suspicious. Government employees will not threaten to take away any benefits or ask for money or personal information to protect your social security card or benefits. And if you receive a call from someone asking for your social security number, bank account number, or credit card information, don't engage this caller. Instead, hang up and report that information to uh, Social Security Administration's Office for the Inspector General via its online fraud reporting form. And you can also report government imposters to the FTC at ftc.gov complaint. So once again, you know, don't be scammed because they're out there all over the place. Okay, just be very, very careful. And some of them are really nasty. They could do all kinds of real damage. Okay, uh-huh. this happened, where was this? Somewhere in northern India. Son pushes BMW. Son pushes a BMW given to him into river because he wanted a Jaguar. Okay, so this kid got all upset because his parents bought him a BMW. He didn't want a BMW. He wanted a Jaguar. So he pushed it into a river and uh, the cops came. And uh, there you go. So uh, I guess arrogance really knows no national boundaries. Okay, he's lucky he didn't. They didn't buy him an '83 Chevette. Now that would have been an, an insult, right? Anyway, so they gave him a BMW. He wanted the Jaguar, but he was really miffed, and he pushed it into a river. And there you go. Okay, as I said, arrogance, and we're set. Okay, that's it, and I will see you tomorrow at 8:05. Bye. <laughs>